quickly cut uh, across to Priyanka Chaturvedi of the Shiv Sena, headed by Sanjay, headed by Udav Thakre. Sanjay Rawat right now in ED custody. He's been detained. Uh, Ms. Chaturvedi, what do you, how would you look at this case as uh, Udav Thakre has just broken his silence, saying this is an attempt by the BJP to divide uh, Hindus so that there's no party left to really save Marathis. You know, wh wh as much as said, we're looking at some serious allegations of money laundering that's been leveled against Sanjay Rawat, his family members, his wife. So, and it's a case not new. It's been on at least under scanner by the ED for quite a few years now. How would you look at this? All I'd like to say is, and I would like to remind the people of this country is, that all the ED action and proactiveness has been reserved for a select few, which is India's opposition. Whether we look at West Bengal, whether we look at Maharashtra, whether we also look at the engineered rebellion that has happened in Maharashtra, where those who had ED cases against them have been warned, who have been told to move to the Bharti Janata Party side of the Shiv Sena, and that is what you're seeing. Their cases have closed overnight. Their cases have also been forgotten overnight. This only shows that ED is working uh, as an ally to the Bharti Janata Party, the central government, and is now the extended department of the uh, BJP and helping them continue to create problems in the opposition. And talking about the charges, the charges uh, against Mr. Himanta Biswa Sharma when he was in the Congress party were also very serious. What happened to that? What conclusion has it been reached to? 27 times over ED summons have been increased, ED notices have been increased, and if you look at that number from pre-2014 level to now, it will only show you that those 27 times the number has increased, has some only on the opposition leaders. So, Ms. Chaturvedi, give us an understanding on what exactly uh, is the allegation from the Shiv Sena by uh, Udav Thakre that the governor, Bhagat Singh Khoshiari, had made a statement to which the ED is acting. Give us some clarity on what statement do you make wh which you believe is what uh, is the basis of this detention. Well, very divisive, very well planned, very well thought out. Uh, day before yesterday, we had the governor attend an event and try to create a problem where none exists. Every community, every religion, every caste, uh, uh, whether you look at people coming from lower ec economic strata or higher wealth groups, are all coexisting in Maharashtra happily. Under a pre-planned conspiracy, they have tried to divide the people of Mumbai and Maharashtra because it helps the politics of the Bharatiya Janata Party. In case you haven't seen the model, uh, uh, you know, apply across India, they are trying to apply that in Maharashtra. It is very surprising that ED notices against earlier, uh, whether it is Bhavna Gauliji, whether, uh, like I've already said, the rebellion candidates, uh, rebellion MPs and MLAs, has all gone into cold storage, and suddenly this case has been revived out of nowhere at all. And also on the basis of the ED summons, yeah, the ED reaching his office at a time when he is attending the parliament session has requested in writing that he is willing to cooperate with the enforcement directorate, allow him the time to at least complete this parliamentary session, uh, you know, and, uh, to ensure that responsibility towards his parliamentary obligation is completed and be happy to cooperate. Wonder what was the hurry when yes, the, yesterday the governor created this controversy where he demeans the people of Maharashtra and today they attack the very uh, Maharashtrian who has been loudest opponent of the Bharti Janata Party. And that is a question that really needs to be asked. You know, uh, why not at this point wait for the ED to investigate the matter, take this matter more gracefully, adhere to those summons? He hasn't even appeared to many of those summons that were issued to him. Uh, how would you look at that? Sanjay Rawat being the typical rebel. I am sorry. He has been cooperating with the enforcement directorate. And like I said, the last two summons, because the parliament was in session, he had given in writing that uh, kindly excuse him from during the parliament session and he'll be willing to cooperate after the session is over. I wonder what uh, hell broke loose for the uh, ED to uh, turn up at his house without even giving him information. What, what has he done which, is, which has uh, ended up making them uh, react so urgently? I'll tell you what they, has happened. What has happened is they have seen the backlash coming out of the governor's uh, statement, deliberate statement coming from the governor, and we all know how the governor's office has been used politically ever since Bhagat Singh Koshari ji was, had, has taken charge, whether it is overnight attempt to uh, try and uh, uh, get a government sworn in with uh, uh, Mr. Um, Devendra Fadnavis leading the government uh, for a government to last 48 hours 
and not appointing the MLCs which were sent to him and many such instances which I can continue to talk about. However, considering how uh, Maharashtrians were angry about it, they have now focused their attack on Sri Sanjay Rao. I would want to know what uh, hell broke loose or how urgent did it overnight become for them to uh, reach his house rather than cooperating with him as well and saying that we, we would ensure that he attends to his par parliamentary obligations as well as attend the ED. I would well, want to know that's, how, that's the how situation today. We believe that previous summons as well were not grace, adhered to. You're talking about, no, no, you're talking about grace. Grace from people, from an enforcement agency which has become an extended department of the BJP. Like I've already given you uh, uh, statistics which show that ED action has been motivated. Now, I do understand that why you expect grace. Every grace should be expected out of the opposition. But grace is missing when it comes to those who should be following their duty and obligation but end up becoming political weapons of the Bharti Janta Party. A few times in the past as well, uh, Mr. Chaturvedi, that uh, summons were issued to Sanjay Rawat but he didn't quite adhere to it. Uh, may have given a reason to why he wasn't available but it seems like he skipped close to three enforcement directed summons. And now let me tell you, there were two uh, summons which he skipped and both these summons were during the parliament session. Now I will give you another example. Bhavna Gauliji, who's recently become the chief whip uh, uh, appointed by the speaker and uh, through uh, supporting the Ekna Shinde faction, has skipped 10 ED summons. Open and shut case. Why, 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 how come? Nobody has reached out to her. Now, simple question. I only give these examples to make you realize that these actions are based upon political reactions and political expectations of those people who are totally now controlling the enforcement directorate. It is a shame, and they will go down in history as bureaucrats, as officers, who w dance to the tunes of the Bharti Janta Party at a time when they had to stand tall and ensure that the institutions are not compromised in this country. You know, Ms. Uh, Priyanka, here we're looking at visuals coming in live from Sanjay Rao's residence. We see the uh, cadre, Shiv Sena cadre, women particularly, who are sitting in Dharana. They're, they've locked off the gates. Their uh, will is to not allow the enforcement directorate to take Sanjay Rawat along with them. What much with the, with the cadre gain at this point, apart from just uh, you know, some commotion that it could lead to, eventually the ED will be guiding him out. Uh, any, any future course of action that the Shiv Sena under Rudav Thakre is mulling over? The, the cadre will expose what ED stands for and how BJP has a huge problem with Marathi Manos and a Marathi Manos who was vocally speaking against the Bharatiya Janata Party and exposing Bharatiya Janata Party for what it is will at least people would get to know that this is a, a vindictive action being taken by enforcement directorate because they do know that every single Maharashtrian is angry at the outburst of the governor of Maharashtra. And this is not the first time he has said it, whether it was about Savitri Bhai Puleji, whether it was about Mahatma Jyoti, Jyoti Bhai Puleji, whether it was about Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. He has created controversies uh, again, and uh, every single Maharashtrian is angry about it. And this action is only, uh, I would say, a, a step further to try and insult and humiliate the people of Maharashtra. Hmm. Ms. Chaturvedi, finally, you know, we spoke to Navneet Rana, Amravati MP, and she said, how can uh, editor-in-chief of uh, the Sena mouthpiece really uh, accumulate this kind of wealth over the years? There's obviously something suspicious and fishy, and why, why should the ED be stopped from doing its Well, duty? is she is she the enforcement directorate chairperson? Is she the director ED that I should be responding to her? Everybody knows that she is an opponent to Shiv Sena, and I would not be wanting to even respond to the charges. If it was the enforcement directorate or the director telling me this, I would perhaps respond it, but not to someone who has no, a motivated If this is a perception, Ms. Chaturvedi, a perception that the man has grown... Um, no, that's a perception. ...grown wealth that's over the years. That's a perception. Now, now, I'm sorry. You can also look at the BJP uh, people who have risen from the ranks. Hmm. You can also look at their balance sheet. And then we can discuss this. We can perhaps go back to Navneet Rana's balance sheet or her husband Ravi Rana's balance sheet and have a discussion on this. Like I said, if it was the director of enforcement directed asking me for a re response, I would do it on the basis of his response, but not on the basis of someone who is politically motivated and has been speaking up against the uh, Shiv Sena and Udhavala yeah. Sahib. Right, right. Priyanka, here we're looking at Sanjay Rawat who said they've uh, asked me time and again to join the Shinde camp, to join the BJP. Since I've flatly refused, this this is my fate. So he, he's making it look like they've, they've been troubling him to join the camp and if not, then we're not going to spare you. Is that, okay. is that what you would corroborate? I will, 
said, Nabila ji, I will request you. Just yesterday, Arjun Khotkar ji did a press conference. Arjun Khotkar is a former minister of the Shiv Sena, as, a, as well as an elected MLA, who lost his election. He was crying during his press conference. He was weeping through his press conference. And all he said was that I am being forced to support the Shinde camp because I have been warned that if I don't support them, that ED, ED by the way, has already attached his properties, mm -hmm. that ED will perhaps trouble his parents, his family members and everybody. So if you can't play that out and talk about the kind of pressure that uh, many of, uh, you know, Shisenics are under, then I do not know whether I should be answering this question or whether I should be um, even uh, wanting to respond to such uh, charges. Right. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Priyanka Chatwedi, for joining us.